my brothers and sisters, I think let us be a bit realistic about what is going on in the world today. Many years ago, in Berlin, Europeans sat down and subdivided our continent as time separating a brother from our sister. After they finished doing that and colonizing us, they, they went ahead and taught us to fear, hate, and keep away from each other. So you are my neighbor, but I fear you, and I don't want to mingle with you. Let me give you an example and use a few African examples. Today, it is easier for a European to travel within Europe without requirement of a visa. They can trade, make money, visit each other, spend money. And the European Union area, and they make a lot of money, they're becoming rich and rich every day. In Africa, our former colonies and what they taught us still prevails. Then they mingle among each other. Today in Africa, the reality is that for an African to visit a European nation, an ordinary African, to visit an European nation, is like, let me give you an example my teacher used to use, it's like trying to milk an elephant because of the visa process. However, for a European to visit an African nation, most of our nations, it is like a walk on the beach. It's like going to have a cup of tea. But then that is not the problem. The tragedy is that now for an African to visit a fellow African within the African Union, the visa restrictions in many of our nations among us, between our brothers and sisters, is like trying to brush the teeth of a crocodile. They came, divided us, and they have taught us to keep each other from each other. Then they're mingling with each other and making money and growing, but they have taught us to hate each other. But for us to really enjoy the true economic benefits of the Africa continental free trade area, we need to behave like the Europeans and allow for the free movement of people and trade. Our development agencies, such as the African Union Development Agency and others, cannot really succeed when there are all these restrictions among ourselves. To this end, in our contribution to this continental aspiration, Kenya is committed to progressively, and we are moving very fast by the end of this year, to abolish visas to citizens from African Union member states to make it easier to invest and do business in Kenya and across the continent. We are going to open the borders of Kenya. We do not fear our fellow Africans. <clears throat> Come, travel to Kenya. Live, do business in Kenya. Trade, make money in Kenya. And we hope we'll get reciprocity with the rest of you. Let us open our continent so that we can make money and live together. Let us remove the shackles of colonialism that are still embedded in our heads and be able to move forward. Mr. Chair, Chairperson, Excellencies, climate change continues to ravage lives and livelihoods of millions. Of we must remain faithful in the implementation of decisions that we make in our sessions. Let me say something that some of you may not like. African Union needs to be self-reliant. As long as the bulk of the AU funds come from outside the African continent, we somehow will find ourselves dancing to the music that is not of our own making. Therefore, we must address the issue of reforms that will enable us to fund our own programs. Funding that comes from our friends is good, but it needs to be funding that is in support of our programs and not our lifeline. Therefore, this calls for a critical look at the architecture of the African Union and the way we implement our decisions and the way we fund this continent. It's a discussion that we must have and we must agree to ourselves that we need to take care of ourselves so that others can support us but we are not being told to dance. My teacher used to say that at times when, when you are wearing somebody's suit you know, and you start dancing, they start telling you slow down because you may ruin that suit. You know. We want to wear our own suits and dance the way we want, not to the tunes of other people.